President Putin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov on Wednesday sharply criticized Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's who called for unspecified global action to force Russia into peace. Such a position is a fatal mistake, Peskov said. On Tuesday Zelensky dismissed the notion of peace talks with Moscow, calling instead for unspecified global action to force Russia into peace for invading his country and to comply with the UN Charter's requirement that every country respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all other nations. The Kremlin spokesperson claimed that it was a profound misconception, adding that it will inevitably have consequences for the Kiev regime. Peskov also rejected UK Foreign Secretary David Lammy's accusations at the UN Security Council meeting of Russia tearing up UN statute. We do not agree with this position, Peskov said. He added that Russia acts in accordance with all principles and norms of international law, which includes protecting its legitimate interests. President Joe Biden underscored the importance of alliances and U.S. support for Ukraine in its war with Russia in his final address to the United Nations General Assembly Tuesday. His appearance before the international body offered Biden one of his last high-profile opportunities as president to make the case to keep up robust support for Ukraine, which could be in doubt if former President Donald Trump, who has scoffed at the cost of the war, defeats Vice President Kamala Harris in November. Biden also used his wide-ranging address to speak to the need to end the Middle East conflict and the 17-month-old civil war in Sudan and warn about the risks of AI development. I've seen a remarkable sweep of history, Biden said. I know many look at the world today and see difficulties and react with despair but I do not. In his final address to the body, Biden called for the sustainment of Western support for Ukraine in its war with Russia. Biden helped galvanize an international coalition to back Ukraine with weapons and economic aid in response to Russian President Vladimir Putin's February 2022 assault on Ukraine. We cannot grow weary, Biden said. We cannot look away. Biden has managed to keep up American support in the face of rising skepticism from some Republican lawmakers, and Trump, about the cost of the conflict. At the same time, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is pressing Biden to loosen restrictions on the use of Western-supplied long-range missiles so that Ukrainian forces can hit deeper in Russia. Putin has warned that Russia would be at war with the United States and its NATO allies if they allow Ukraine to use the long-range weapons. Biden and Harris are scheduled to hold separate meetings with Zelensky in Washington on Thursday. Ukrainian officials were also trying to arrange a meeting for Zelensky with Trump this week. My fellow leaders, today is the fourth time I've had the great honor of speaking to this assembly as President of the United States. It'll be my last. I've seen a remarkable sweep of history. The people need more than the absence of war. I know, I know many look at the world today and see difficulties and react with despair, but I do not. I won't. As leaders, we don't have the luxury. I recognize the challenges from Ukraine to Gaza to Sudan and beyond. War, hunger, terrorism, brutality, record displacement of people, the climate crisis, 
democracy at risk, strange within our societies, the promise of artificial intelligence and its significant risk. The list goes on. But maybe because all I've seen and all we have done together over the decades, I have hope. I know there is a, a way forward. There will always be forces that pull our countries apart and the world apart. Aggression, extremism, chaos, and cynicism. A desire to retreat from the world and go it alone. Our task, our test, is to make sure that the forces holding us together are stronger than those who are pulling us apart. That the principles of partnership that we came here each year to uphold can withstand the challenges. That the center holds once again. As we look ahead, we also address the rise of violence. Each of us in this body has made a commitment to the principles of the UN Charter to stand up against aggression. When Russia invaded Ukraine, we could have stood by and merely protested. But Vice President Harris and I understood that that was an assault on everything this institution is supposed to stand for. And so, in my direction, America stepped into the breach, providing massive security and economic and humanitarian assistance. Our NATO allies and partners in 50-plus nations stood up as well. But most importantly, the Ukrainian people stood up. I ask the people of this chamber to stand up for them. The good news is Putin's war has failed and his, at his core aim. He set out to destroy Ukraine, but Ukraine is still free. He set out to weaken NATO, but NATO is bigger, stronger, more united than ever before with two new members, Finland and Sweden. But we cannot let up. The world now has another choice to make. Will we sustain our support to help Ukraine win this war and preserve its freedom? Or walk away and let aggression be renewed and a nation be destroyed? I know my answer. We cannot grow weary. We cannot look away. And we will not let up on our support for Ukraine. Not until Ukraine wins a just and durable peace in the UN Charter.